Welcome back. I know it's been a while since I've been on here. I took about a year off that I just needed to just to handle some things around here and just for myself. But I'm excited now to get back into the projects and to share with you guys just some of my new adventures. So to start off, I wanted to show you guys a river table desk that I started actually over a year ago. This was a collaboration with Total Boat Epoxy and they sent me some new items that I have never used before. So I thought it would be fun just to show you how those items worked and of course the learnings that I had in dealing with new products. For this project I'm using Curly Maple and I got a rather large piece here so I can use the other side for something else and I just cut it in half both horizontally and vertically. And then you'll notice that when you switch the sides, it makes it look like there's a river going down the middle, which was exactly what I was going for here. I ran these boards through the joiner just to get a nice straight flat edge. This will help it fit in the mold as well as help with the finishing in the end. Same with the planer. I just ran the tops and the bottoms through the planer. For the edge, I just go along and I sand off the majority of the bark there, just to clean it up. Moving over to the circular saw, I get the length correct, as well as working on making sure I have that nice 90 degree angle cut there. I'm using melamine here for my form, just as I've done with all of my other epoxy projects. I really like using melamine for my epoxy pores. It's easy to work with, not too expensive, and it seems to work great for me. I'm just sealing up the edges with a regular white caulking. This is the way that I have found best just to seal up all the edges to make sure that I don't have any epoxy leaking out of the mold. This time I actually did spring for the regular mold release and I just sprayed it all along the bottom and the sides. Next, I just set in the boards right on top of the caulking that's in there before the caulking completely dries. Next, I'm wrapping some of the scrap melamine with some of the tape, just in case it gets any epoxy on it. And I'm just using them so I can hold down those boards there. Sometimes when you do the epoxy pour, it tends to float the wood, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just making sure that everything is level here. I made a last minute decision here to put caulking on the edges to try to keep the epoxy from seeping in just to save me a little bit of money. You'll see that I end up paying for this in the end. So here's my first pour. I just poured in a little bit in the bottom to start with. And then I'm just laying out some rocks and kind of going with a design and a pattern that I feel would replicate a river and how it would look. The big rocks actually came from my yard and the little rocks were actually just from a pet store meant for fish tanks. I poured another amount of epoxy in there and then I just, again, put some rocks in where I figured there would be extra rocks that would kind of gather as the water flowed. I also had my daughter put in some white rocks just down the middle just to give it a little bit of depth and make it look like it would as if the water was flowing through. So the fun part about this project are these stickers that I found. There's four stickers in here and you just put on one sticker at a time. You pour a little bit of epoxy and then pour the next sticker and you do this same process for all four stickers. This just gives it a little bit of depth, making those fish actually look like they are alive. So I've tried a few different ways of how to put on these fish. The first time I put the fish just straight on there 
and poured some epoxy over the top. The second time, I actually poured a little epoxy first and then put down the stickers. I found that this did not work as well because with the epoxy on there wet, the fish tended to move, the stickers tended to move around a lot more. So I found out that for me, the best way to do it was to put the stickers on first, then put a little bit of epoxy over the top of them and let that epoxy dry. You do wanna make sure that you're putting on the fish stickers, the next one, when your epoxy is still a little bit tacky and not completely dry. I also got some lily pad stickers, which are just kind of a fun extra in there. So this does take quite a while because you have to wait in between each sticker and then I actually put the lily pads even higher up. I ended up running out of epoxy and had to order more. Now the issue that I had with this is that my epoxy dried fully. So in order to get it to adhere to the next pour, I had to sand it down with 220 grit sandpaper and then I used alcohol just to wipe along and make sure I got off all the residue. Now I'm just taking off the form boards and you can see that the sides turned out great. They came right off and were super clean. Now for some reason the bottom, like I had said earlier, it just really stuck to that melamine. So it ended up being quite a chore getting that melamine off of the bottom. I even enlisted my husband's help in this and it wasn't too big of a problem, but it was very time consuming to get that melamine off. So I need to figure out my mold release issue here so I can fix that for next time. Now with the form boards off, you can see where that white caulking is right on the edge there. A piece of the wood broke off, so I'm just using CA glue here to hold it onto the side and taping that on for it to dry. Since I'll be doing a epoxy pour over the top, it will get in there and seal up any of the gaps in there as well. Remember how I said that caulking was gonna be an issue? That's because you can see the caulking in there and I had to cut down the edges. However, I didn't think through the fact that I would also be cutting through rock. This ended up really burning the wood and ruined a blade of my saw as well. So for anyone else, I would recommend just leaving the ends as is, do not put caulking in there, and then just do the pour over the top. I was able to sand down the whole project except for those ends. I could sand down a little bit of that burnt wood, but again, I couldn't sand down too much because the rock was there and I couldn't sand down the rock. To fill in the cracks in the wood, I just used CA glue and some accelerator. Then I sanded them down. I end up doing this about three or four times, sometimes even more than that, just until that CA glue is really in all of those holes and seals it all in tight. Now I'm just getting the legs on the bottom all straightened up and exactly where I want them and marking where I need to cut the holes for them. I found that if I make a pilot hole, it's a lot easier when I start drilling. Otherwise my drill tends to slide and I can't get it to stay in one place. Next, I'm putting in some metal inserts and I'm just using a little CA glue to hold them in. Now I like using these metal inserts because it allows me to put on the legs or take off the legs as many times as I want. So if I ever need to move the table, I can take them out and that way I'm not drilling into the wood again and again. At this point, I needed to prepare the top for when I did the last pour over the top. So I had to sand again with 220 grit sandpaper just so that the epoxy would stick to the next pour. Now I taped the bottom. I wouldn't do this again 
the tape actually ended up just kind of being messy, sticking to the epoxy, and I think it would have been easier for me to just let the epoxy go onto the bottom and just sand it off. Now, epoxy can be super messy, so you wanna do everything you can to prep your surfaces to make sure if there is any sort of a spill, it lands on things that you can pick up and throw away. And then you wanna level your piece of wood as much as possible. Then I'm just using alcohol to make sure that I get any residue off so that it doesn't get in the pour. Now since I tried to be cheap and not overfill my project while it was in the mold, I ended up having to tape the edges so that I could get the pour to go all the way level and even with the wood there. So learn from this and when you do your pour, make sure to over pour just a little bit. Now I used a special pour over product from Total Boat and it worked out really well. It's different than regular epoxy because it actually is thicker so you can kind of work with it. It'll stay somewhat on the top and then flow over the edges for you. So you can see I'm working with it a little bit. You want to be careful that you're not overworking it. But it was nice because I was able to get a thick enough coat that it really covers, whereas regular epoxy, I feel, would just have all come right off and over the edge. They gave me a heat gun with this, and I've never used one before. I was really excited to use it, and you can see me using it on every air bubble that I see. You'll see here in a second that I got a little overexcited with it and I used it too much and I used it too close. So I'll just warn you to be careful with it, hold it back, don't use it again and again on air bubbles. So here by overusing that heat gun, it actually ended up drying out certain areas and almost drying in what looks like bubbles into it. So the nice thing about epoxy is that it's very forgiving. So I just got my sander and I sanded down all of these areas. It ended up being quite a deep area that I had to redo. But again, it was not really a big deal, just time consuming. And I got it all prepped and ready and did a second pour over the top. And it turned out great. You couldn't even tell that anything had happened. So if this happens to you, know that your project is not ruined. Now time to put on those legs. Like I said before, this is great because you just put them on. The metal inserts are already there so the screws go right into the holes that they need to go into. And you can take them on and off as many times as you want and it will not ruin the wood. I enlisted help from my son in flipping over the table. And I would like to say that I always require shoes in the shop. Don't know how I uh, missed this one here. Now there were definitely some learnings in this project. Working with Total Boat Epoxy went really well. I like the product and I really like the kit that I got that just came with everything that I needed. Please stay tuned for my up and coming projects and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my next video when it comes out.